Brakatakato, Zeketekete, Branda Siska, Branda Siska, Branda Siska, Nekenti Present, Biloton, Beliska, Present, Zigatolia, Magale, Sumbre, Debeteriga, Nishmanda, Libosendia, Gata, Belika, Zaya, Mazo, Prataya, Begete, Mekande, Rebe, Degetelia, Nekatambra, Degetelia, Shanda, Dada, Naskambra, Debetelia, Mekete, Brekete, Makanakato, Kombre, Degetelia, We're going to take some prayers today, but before we uh, begin to take prayers, I want to just share something to, I think, um, I don't know if I would say encourage our hearts, but to shed some light on what we're doing and um, why we're doing what we're doing. So if you look at um, Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10, it says here in um, that portion of scripture, right? Speaking about God, it says, 
um, he declares the end from the beginning, okay? So if you look at other translations, it puts it even in the first person. It says, I declare the end from the beginning, okay? This is exposing to us yeah. the nature of God. He is a God mm. who declares the end from the beginning. That is that he stands where he is, okay? He already knows what the end is going to be. And rather than trying to work his way there, he simply states it from the beginning. He simply declares it. He sets the tone for it. And then it can commence. That is the nature of God. And here's the thing that um, you, you have to understand. The more we are like God, the more and we are children of God, right? The Bible lets us know that. The more of God's nature we imbibe, the more of God's ways we imbibe, the more of God's results we see. That is the truth. So that's why when you take a look at scriptures, it talks about why Moses was able to do the kinds of things that he did. He said, because he made known his ways unto Moses. And so if you take the time to study the way that God handles issues or the way that God approaches matters, I would say, and we decide to pattern ourselves after it, it makes it such that we ourselves are able to see the same kinds of results that he sees. So when the Bible says that he declares the, uh, the end from the beginning, that is exactly what we're doing when we're spending the beginning of the year in Thanksgiving. And I'm saying this because some of us might be worried and thinking, listen, I have problems. I have things that must be settled. I have things that, you know, and I mean, there I think every kind of church you could find right now is doing something. If it's not 21 days, it's 30 days, 40 days, you know, you'll find something, right? But this is the instruction that we have been given in this house. And it is for that reason that we're confident um, in what we're doing. But more importantly, when we take up this position of giving thanks, instead of just coming to mention prayer points and just list out prayer points, maybe we do not realize it, but we are conforming to the nature of God. We are essentially declaring the end of that matter from the beginning. So there are things that we give because of things that have happened in the past, but a way to, 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 to take on God's nature, especially in the place of prayer, is this. This is a strategy, is that we declare the end. If we know that this matter is already going to end in praise, so why start with making requests? Why start with asking questions? How about you start with the Thanksgiving? You already know you're going to do the Thanksgiving in the end, right? This is what it looks like to declare the end from the beginning. So you already know that this matter will end in praise. This matter will end in thanksgiving. So rather than starting from the beginning and walking to the end, how about you adopt God's ways and instead focus on that thanksgiving since that is your end. So now once I declare that end, once I, once I, once I establish that end, once I already determine that this end, this thing ends in thanksgiving, I already know where I'm headed. I hope I'm making sense to someone. So once I've already set it, I've already put the, the, the goalpost, if you, if you will. I've already established that end. I've decided, I have, I've made it clear that this thing ends in Thanksgiving. So I'm beginning from there. So I begin with Thanksgiving, knowing that no matter how this thing plays out, no matter how this thing goes, I'm going to end there as well. Why? Because I already established the, the final line. I already established the finish line of this, which is Thanksgiving. So when we come together like this, and we're giving thanks at the beginning of the year, and we're giving thanks about things that we would have been asking for as prayer points, we are simply following God's pattern. We are declaring the end of that thing from the beginning. And it is yeah. important that you do that in your life. Too many of us live in a way where it's like life takes us by surprise. This is your way out of that kind of cycle. So you're not taken by surprise. You're not taken unawares. You've already set it. And now you begin to walk your way. So in the next couple of minutes, we're going to take more specific prayers. But there's something in your heart. There's something in your heart that you hoped we will create time for you to pray about in this 21 days. There's something that you have heavy on your mind that you hoped would be a specific prayer point in this 21 days. And now you're you are finding that we're here doing Thanksgiving. There's something that you brought here, hoping we will, we will, as a corporate house, address it. 
I want you to open your mouth and give God thanks for that thing. Sign the paper now. Just sign the contract. You go back and go through the details, but for now, sign it. It is done. It is finished with your thanksgiving. So whatever that thing is, even if it's more than one thing, I want you to open your mouth and let us all raise our voice together and begin to give God thanks. Let us establish the end of that matter right now before we even begin to progress into the year. Amen. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Where the word of a king is, there is power. The reason I'm saying that is that you have to really understand why this thing is important. When a king shows up somewhere, he's not trying to ask like, oh, can we do this? Can we do that? A king simply determines what the outcome of that thing needs to be. And he just says it. He doesn't care whether the people who have to get that thing done have the things ready. He's not really asking, oh, do we have this or do we have that? He simply sits down and says, we're going to host I don't know, whatever king is coming to visit him, get a banquet ready. That's his own. And then everybody else scampers and just tries to make that happen. Why? Because he has decided what they are going to do. He has declared that end. We are having this feast. 
And the Bible says where the word of the king is there. So this is why it is important that you establish that thing at first, from the beginning, before you start working your way up there. Because one of the things that happens is when you, when you, when you commit it like this, not just by saying it in words, but, but um, would I say uh, confirming it with thanksgiving, all of the forces that are required to make sure that this thing is exactly as you have said it, they begin to move. You don't have to think too much about like, oh, who do I you know, call? How do I make it? At that point, things begin to fall into place. Why? Because the word of a king has gone forth. The word of a king has gone forth. And we know who we are. We're not, we're not people who stay here begging God to do things for us. No, we are kings and priests. We are kings and priests. So when we speak something, we speak it from that place of authority. We speak it from that place of power. So we're going to make that prayer for one more minute before we start taking some specific prayer points um, uh, this afternoon. And once again, you are going to establish that thing, even as a king. And I want you to say to, to, to do the Thanksgiving right now from this awareness. You are speaking it as a king. You are establishing it. You are saying this is exactly how it's going to be. And when you do that, whatever forces, whatever angelic you know, assistance is required to get it done, they begin to move. They begin to move. You're not doing it begging and hoping. You are doing it from a place of knowledge and you're doing it from that place of power. So let's open our mouth one more time and give thanks for this thing. Not because we're saying, I have many need to work out. No, we're giving thanks because we know it has worked out. We already know it's done. So let us open our mouth and give thanks for that thing one more time in one minute before we move on to some prayer points. Rekaya <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want us to take one um, prayer right now. Now, many of us are aware of the theme or basically the word that the Lord gave us, Dabala and I, for the ministry. That's for the tribe as well as for kings are. Okay. So Damala, um, had shared with us, you know, the year of restoration. That's that's our theme for um, uh, King's Hour for this year. I'm oh, sorry for the tribe this year, and for King's Hour, it's the year of magnificent glory. And we were sitting and talking about it, and we're laughing at how eventually we kind of, you know, would I say collided in what God was showing us and what God was telling us about what He's doing. The reason that's important is because when the Bible talks about restoration, when we talk about restoration, the the question is to what? To what? What are we being restored to? Okay, that's the question. But you see, the Bible is very clear. It says man sinned and fell short. Fell short of what? Glory. At the end of the day, everything that God is doing, everything that God is looking to do in us, for us, through us, the end goal is to bring us back to that place of glory because that, that was our original form. So when God says he's doing a restoration, you might look at it and look at it from a, uh, would I say, a, a small lens. You, you might look at it myopically and think, oh, maybe he's restoring, I don't know, finances. Maybe he's restoring maybe a relationship or maybe he's restoring something. I don't know, an item, something. But if you back up a little bit, you'll see that this is the bigger picture that God has in mind. So many times we come to God with very, like, small expectations of what we think he's doing so we hear that he's restoring and we think oh he's going to restore i don't know maybe a car or something you know that's it but the truth is god's goal what god is doing in us at the end of the day is to restore us to that state of glory that's what the original plan was for man until man fell 
So when we're making these prayers and we're talking about restoration, let us understand that this thing covers everything in your life that pertains to glory coming out of you. Not just restoring food, not just restoring things. It's the end goal is that your life produces glory. That's it. Now, why am I saying this? We're going to take Thanksgiving prayers. Because the truth of the matter is this, is that we can come here and make some of these lofty declarations. We can make some of these statements and all of that. But there are things that have to be put in place in order for these things to um, actually be true in your life, right? And so as we pray right now and we give thanks, I want us to give thanks for something specifically. When you look at the Bible, the anchor scripture we have for Kings Arrow this year is that um, arise and shine, you know, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says the glory is risen upon you, but it happened because of the light. Where is that light from, really? There are many ways that we can look at it. But the reality is that if there's going to be a restoration in your life, if your life is going to produce glory, that glory is a function of that light. And that light is the one that comes out of your own altar. It's the light, it's the fire that comes out of your own altar. Because the brighter the fire of your own altar is shining, that's what people see. You think they are seeing you because of how you dress. You think they are seeing you for your eloquence. What they are seeing is the light on your altar. So you can sit up here and make prayers and declarations, but if you leave this place, and bear up into life and abandon your altar, it will seem to you that we made a declaration here that maybe is not very true because you cannot connect it to what's going on in your life. So we're going to give thanks to God because God is helping us take care of the foundation before we even set up. We're going to give thanks to God that every single one of us here, as we, dep- like as we go through this 21 days and even finish this 21 days, that this year our altars are going to burn brightly and vibrantly because understand that it is the fire that comes from your altar it is the vibrance of your altar that is the light that men see it is that very light that brings your life into a place of glory so it's not because somebody here said it as a word it's not because somebody here pronounced it over you we will pronounce it over you and if you walk into your life and do not understand the back end of what produces this day your life will not look any different So we're going to thank God because this is where many people falter. You come into a 21 days prayer program, you're fired up, you're energized, you're so excited, but you leave here and you you get overwhelmed with life's responsibilities. Uh, Things come your way, your job, everything just hits you. So now you can't really attend to your prayer altar and you keep pushing it. You'll be like, oh, next week I'll start, next week I'll start. Let me tell you, I think for those of us who have spent enough time in the tribe and in King's Hour, you will know this. It's no secret. We run on prayer. You accept you have another source. You can't hack this thing any other way. It's prayer or it's prayer. So we're going to thank God today that our altar throughout this year will continue to be blazing, will be burning, will be vibrant because we know that that is what is going to produce the glory in our life. We know that that is what is going to bring about the restoration. I'm telling you that there are things that will happen in your life this year that will not happen because it was taken up as a prayer. It'll happen simply because God is committed to us this year to restore us to a place of glory. In whatever areas of our life the enemy has tampered with, it will happen without anybody praying over you. It will happen without it being raised as a prayer point in the group. It will happen just like that spontaneously in your life. But I tell you this thing, your altar cannot go up. You accept your lying to yourself. Your altar cannot go up. So we're going to settle it right now. And thank God and say, Father, this year, my altar will be blazing. From this point to the 31st of December, it will not go down because I understand that it powers the glory that is to come out of my life. Let's just open our mouth and thank God for that grace to stay in the prayer. Thank 
Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Please don't take this prayer for granted. Please don't take this prayer for granted because indeed there will be mass restoration that happens with us. And you know why I say that? Because we have an identity in this uh, ministry and we call ourselves a tribe of marketplace ministers. And even, you know, in King's Arrow, that is our identity. But you see, the truth is many of us are not living that reality, right? So in a place where we should be those the ones ministering to people, there's still so much the enemy has lodged in our lives that keeps us from being able to leave out that identity, to leave out who we say what we are. But that's part of what God will be restoring to us this year. So when you step out and you say you are a marketplace minister, all of the, would I say elements and artifacts, all of the things that God puts on a marketplace minister to be able to stand and shine in the marketplace and any other space, those things will be restored to your life. Everything that mm -hmm. you know the enemy had lodged on your life and had attached to you that almost stood as like, I don't know, forms of reproach, we're thankful to God because those things will fall off of you even as you are restored to your true identity by reason of you standing in this place of, a, of being a minister. There are things that your life should produce. There are things that it should produce. But we see that for many of us, we're not there. We're all walking our way there. But trust that this year, that is what God is doing for us, is that restoration to our true identity. We stand as those ministering lights to people around us, not those who are constantly needing help for intervention in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're gonna take another prayer. 
Um, and you know, this one, you know, I, let me just go and I share it because I don't know how else to um, uh, explain it. I was watching a little clip yesterday and this one, it was Archbishop uh, Benson Hossa, and he was having a very emotional moment. He was having a very emotional moment and he was saying, um, by the way, Shanti, your video is on, okay, thanks for turning it on. He was saying in a very short clip, he was saying, you know, how can, you know, God get glory for my life when, you know, I'm in pain. He was saying, how can get God, how can God get glory for my life when um, I'm broke? You know, he was, he was literally in tears. He was in tears when he was sinning, he was sinning from a very deep place. And you see that resonated with me. And somebody else was in comment was, was like, oh yes, I, God is to get glory for my life. And said, yes, but understand that that's not the, the plan that God has for you. So things will look different for us this year because that's not the plan. It's not his intention that we sit in those kind of places. But anyway, I want to share a prayer that we're going to take now because this is something that um, it things I may remember. We took it uh, last year when we did the 21 day prayers, um, when we did it separately. And I can testify that indeed my life produced that testimony, okay? Last year, there was a lot of talk about like, you know, recession and all of that. And it did happen. It did happen. Right. There was a lot of talk of recession and all of that. But at the beginning of the year, we stood together and we decreed and declared that it would not come near us. It would not come near us. We said it was not going to happen. And we prayed along those lines. And it was almost as though God was having us establish that thing before getting into the year. Because literally, and one of the scriptures we used um, when we took those prayers was that, you know, a thousand will fall at our left and 10,000 by our right and it shall not come at us. When I tell you that that was literally my testimony, because my workplace actually laid off 10,000 people. Yes, they announced they said 10,000. So people were living in such anxiety for a while because you never knew what was about to come into your inbox. 10,000 people got laid off. And it was such a tough season for many people. You came to work one day and the next thing, the people you worked with yesterday are no longer there. It was a tough season. But you see, I knew that God had said to me at the beginning of the year because the word had come forth. He said, a thousand shall fall at my left, 10,000 by my right, but it will not come near me. 10,000, almost as though God was <laughs> seeing exactly what was going to happen. So it, it was not just scripture. It was actually reality. And that was what was declared and we prayed about it. And indeed, 10,000 people got laid off. And I was, I, was, I was spared by God. And not only that, even people who were still there, they experienced what was you know, possibly their worst year. But you see what? It was my best year ever, not just in that world, but in my entire career. It was my best year ever. What am I trying to say? I'm saying that there is what God does to protect his people. And so when you start getting into the year and you heard prophecies come forth, um, uh, ministers of God have prophesied a famine coming, okay? In the US, people are talking about a recession that's coming. They're talking about this market crashing. They're talking about that market crashing. But that last year, I just stood on what God had said. I was only four by my left, 10,000 by my right, but it do not come near me. And I held that word and that was my story. And I was not only spared, I was not only exempted, I was elevated, okay? Why am I saying this? It's because of the things that many of us have heard. And many of us can attest to the fact that as much as we try to be bold about these things, they shake us sometimes. Because we look at what's happening around us and we are like, there's no way this thing is not going to hit me. We're already thinking in that way. We're like, yeah, the way I see the way my business was last year, there's no way this thing will not hit my business this year. Maybe we're in a field that they're already predicting, oh, it's going to you know, be this way and that way. We want to settle that right now. So we're going to take a prayer the same way we took it in King's Arrow last year. We're going to take that prayer right now. And we're going to thank God. Remember, that's what we're doing. We're just declaring the end from right now. So we're going to thank God for exempting us. We're going to... Thank God for exempting us and our families from every kind of famine, every kind of recession, every kind of prediction, every kind of forecast that is not of God. And we're going to use the scripture. The Bible says in Job 29 and sorry, 22 and 29, it says, when men say there is a casting down, it says, when men are cast down, 
we will say that there is a lifting up. So no matter what's being said in the news, no matter what's being predicted by the smart economists, no matter what's being prophesied, God always has a plan of exemption for his people. Everybody, please mute, okay? Even when famine was ravaging the people, he made a location for Jacob and his sons in Egypt through Joseph. God always has a plan for his people. So right now, we are going to thank him for that plan. We're not the ones who are going to tell him to plan for us. He already knows that and he already makes provisions for us. So we're going to thank God in the next few minutes. And please know we're specifically praying about this because it's going to be the cloak of protection that stays over every one of us in this ministry. That no matter what goes on in our industry, no matter what goes on in the market, in our countries, we are standing on that exception. We are standing on that exception. So let's open our mouth and begin to thank God for exempting us from every kind of famine, every kind of recession, or any kind of bomb turn that is being predicted in the economy or anything that pertains to us. Let's just open our mouth and begin to give God thanks for that. Rekaya <laughs> 
Try please try to listen for my voice. I I don't know why you guys are not hearing me, but please try to listen for my voice. Maybe it's not loud enough, but please just you know try. Um, we're gonna take a couple more prayers, okay? We're gonna take a couple more prayers. Um, um, we're gonna take this next prayer, and you know, before we even get into the next prayer, please, I want to encourage us to take this last prayer point that we just did seriously. And so, even in your private time, even in your personal uh, time of fellowship. Give God thanks for that. I mean that. I mean that. Because I have seen God truly exempt a man from pestilence, from every kind of thing. You look here, somebody is getting fired, somebody else is getting little, another person, and God preserves you and not just preserves you, but actually elevates you. Please take the time to give God thanks for this. We don't wait till they've already decided that we're on the list. Then we're not saying, Father, intervene. No, we thank God. We establish what it's going to look like for us. So no matter what it is that they are doing, somehow, I don't know how they're going to forget your name or whatever the case may be, right? But somehow you are exempted. So please, in your private mm -hmm. time, just take the time to thank God for it. And please don't get lost in news. Some of us, we scroll so much. And then it kind of depletes what we've built up in the place of prayer. But please, in your private time, thank God. Thank God for your exemption. Thank God for making plans for you, regardless of what's happening in your country, in your industry, or whatever the case may be, okay? We're going to take um, a, another prayer, and we're going to take this one from Joseph's life. And in uh, speaking about, you know, declaring the end of a thing um, from the beginning and God having to restore you to that place of glory. You see, the thing is, that end is where that glory is, right? But then sometimes the journey um, might have some bumps and some things along the way. And then, but God still stays in that story to ensure that you're restored to glory. So you, 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 you look at um, someone like Joseph's life. And in the beginning, he had already seen that he was going to have a great life. And, you know, he was saying that, you know, his brothers and obviously that was the implication, right? Like that he's, brothers and <clears throat> his parents were going to bow before him, right? And that's what he had seen. And he had already mentioned it. He was, he was excited for it. So that was even pretty much him. He, he, he just was like, yes, this is my story, right? But he, him declaring it and then it happening, there was a journey that got there, that got him there. There was a journey to that place. And there were components along that journey and they all had to come into alignment um, for it to eventually come to pass. But you find that one of the things that became important in actualizing that destiny, in actualizing that story, um, was relationships, was relationships. So I know we are staying in this place of thanksgiving, thanking God for what he's doing. And if you've noticed, I'm just leading the prayer along with the word that God gave us, you know, this year, but Damala and myself, because I noticed that that's one way you could not it's as if you're praying exactly what God has uh, said he's going to do. So in Joseph's story, you know, he sees that, you know, beautiful destiny. He's excited for it. And then things happen along the way. But part of God's, you know, system of getting him there to that place of glory, that part of his system of, of restoring him was relationships. So even when you look through his, his life, see that he sort of enjoyed some kind of favor, like even, you know, with Potiphar before his wife messed things up. But my point is that for him to eventually get to that position where he was in that place of power, and then his brothers and his father did come and bow to him, that took a relationship. It took someone who he had related with in a setting, even though it was a prison, 
he took someone who he related with there, putting his name in front of the king. Then he got there, offered a solution, and then literally it seemed like overnight he was there. Why am I saying it? It's because a big part of your story this year, a big part of what, how God moves you to that place of glory, a big part of how restoration will come into your life is very much tied to people. That's the truth. It's very much tied to people. It's tied to relationships. Whether it's being connected to the people who will stand with you in prayer, whether it's being connected to the people who can mention your name in rooms that you're not there, whether it's people who just believe enough in what you carry that they are willing to pay your price, whether it's people who believe enough in what you're carrying and they will put your name in front of somebody who can pay your price, right? I don't know what form it's going to take, but understand that relationships are going to play a very big part in your story this year. So what I want us to do right now is that in advance, you know, as we already know that it's going to happen, we're going to give God thanks. How it's going to happen, I don't know, right? And I know that you don't know either. It may be that you attend one program that maybe you didn't even have any business attending. And next thing, you find out somebody and then you're connected to somebody. We've shared the story of a man that we met. Thank you, Jesus. We've shared the story of a man that we met uh, some years ago who told us about how basically God moved him into a different level in life, moved him into wealth. And it happened like that. It's really, literally people. He went to this location. He had no business in what they were doing, but he saw that they were learning how to do um, uh, pools. And he talked to them and they let him in. He got a brochure. This man is wealthy beyond you know, what he, he ever imagined. So I'm saying that everything it is that God is going to do in your life this year, whether it's, you know, provisions, whether it's promotion, whether it's healing, whether it's establishment, right? Whether it's even announcement. I don't know what God has told you that this year represents for you, but it'll happen because man will partner with God and it'll come to pass. So we're going to take um, a couple of minutes and thank God for bringing the right relationships into our life. Whether it's people who can mention us to the right people, whether it's the right people crossing paths with us, gently, maybe in an elevator, right? Maybe in traffic, I don't know. Let's open our mouth and begin to thank God. Thank God for the relationships in our lives that will bring us to exactly what God is trying to do in our lives this year. Rabara, 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 Rabara,
Amen. 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 We're going to take one more prayer before um, we uh, close out, but I want to share something with us before we um, take that prayer. And I think this one will be important for uh, some of us because I, I know sometimes it feels like then doing prayers like ah, for 21 days, but let me, let me share something with you. Okay. The Bible says in first John five and 15, it says, um, let me pull up King James. It says, and if we know that he hears us, whatever, whatsoever we ask, then we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Please take note of the first part of that um, part of scripture. It says, if we know that he hears us. So that means that it is possible to pray a prayer that God is not, you know, listening to. It is very possible. It is very possible that you can be praying a prayer that God is not listening. Why? Look at John, uh, uh, sorry, verse 14, right before then. It says, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So it, that's what I'm saying. That it's possible that you are praying the prayer that God is not hearing. Some of us are very familiar with prayers of crying, prayers of complaint, okay? But it's saying that if, if um, it says this is the confidence that we have in him, that if, he, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So, it means that there is a channel that God is always tuned to. I don't know how I can explain it, but it's almost as though there is a certain frequency band that if that's where your prayers are passing through, you can be rest assured that God hears it. I hope that I'm communicating. It's kind of like um, on radio. So there's different stations. What we are seeing here is that there's a particular channel, there's a particular broadcast range or, or frequency range that you can be rest assured that God is always tuned into that one. And it's the one that is aligned with his will. And what is the easiest way to understand how to get God to hear what you're saying? It's when you pray according to his will. The Bible lets us know that he asks us to give him thanks. The Bible says we should give him thanks. So it's almost as though it's, <laughs> it's, as though it's a way that you smuggle your prayer in there. So you see Jesus come before Lazarus' tomb and he says, Father, I thank you because you, you heard me. That's how he opens it up. It's as though, let me tune into the right band. Once I tune into the right band, then anything else I can, I do, you know, I, I can be sure that it's, it's traveling in the right path. So he first of all tunes into the right frequency band by saying, Father, I thank you. And then after that, he gives the commandment. He says, Lazarus, come forth. This is what we're doing today. We are making sure that we are tuned in on the right band. I know many times these things might seem on scripture like, oh no, God always hears what my dear. Look, I'm not the one who wrote the Bible, so I'm only telling what is in the Bible. If he's saying that there is a way to pray that God is hear you, it means that there's a way to pray that God is not hearing you. That's the reality. So what we're doing when we're praying these prayers of thanksgiving in this 21 days is that we are ensuring that we are tuned into the right frequency. And at that point, anything else that we communicate through on that frequency channel, we know that it's getting heard. So we're going to take the last prayer point before we wrap up today's prayers. And um, we're going to be praying, especially, like I said, my prayers are centered today around you being restored to glory. So we see the story of Jacob also in Genesis when he's gone through, I don't know, his rough days in life. And then he finds himself in uh, Laban's house. That's his father-in-law. And he served there. And Laban is just, I don't know, he's a very interesting person and keeps trying to cheat him over and over. And then at some point, um, you know, Jacob decides that he's ready to go. He's ready to leave. And he tries to strike a deal with his, uh, his father-in-law. And his father-in-law decides to cheat him. We all know the story. But 
how Jacob was able to escape that situation. Because I hope you realize that when he ran from home, he took nothing. He just left. He took nothing. And this man was being put in a situation where he was about to return home or wherever else he was going to go with nothing. Because that was the situation that was set up for him. He was going to go back with nothing. And for many of us, it almost seems as though this is the way that any, the enemy has, has, has barricaded our lives in. Such that no matter how much we have declared this or done that or we've told people we're going to do this or we're going to achieve that and all of that, he, it's almost as if he creates that system so that you end up going back empty. That's what we're going to um, address today. So Jacob is in that situation and the stage is set for him to truly live empty-handed. It was planned out and it was completed. But God intervened for him and came to him in a dream, gave him strategy for his life, and that's how he was able to get his portion out of that setting. Imagine having served in that place as long as he had, and they still had a plan to cause him to walk away from that place empty-handed. God showed up for him, showed him the strategy. So he could have done many things, but there was one thing he needed to do. There were so many other things he could have been doing, and that's the danger with it. If we use our life to test out so many strategies, by the time we look up, some of us already have gray hairs. So this year, you, you, you try your hand at, uh, you know, fashion. Next year, you try your hand in um, IT. Next year, you then try your hand in, uh, you know, farming. You, you just try a few things. The problem is this, is that if you continue to use your life to test different things, you will look up one day and you are old and you, you like the same way that Laban had planned for Jacob, you end up walking back to where you came from empty handed. This is the story many people will tell you about their lives. They start out a year only to end it, they crash landed. Why? Because yet again, they were testing something out and it truly was not what God was doing in their life. But Jacob was able to break himself out of this matrix. He was able to break himself out of this pattern. And we raise this prayer because uh, the majority of us on this call here, we are marketplace ministers. So it means that we are not, like, we, we're not just sitting somewhere and, or just, you know, full-time ministers or maybe sitting at home. We actually have things that our hands are doing in the marketplace. So Jacob's way out of the situation was a strategy that was delivered to him by the angel of the Lord. He employed that exact strategy. In fact, it was so he, he prospered so much that Laban, Laban was so upset and he couldn't do anything about it because it was a legitimate prosperity that landed in his hand. You don't have enough time to test 10,000 things. What you need is to know the exact one thing that you need to do that breaks you out. As I prepared for this uh, year and I kept seeking God for the word for King's Arrow and also by extension, the tribe, I heard it very clearly. I heard it multiple times clearly, glory, glory, glory. There is a strategy that God has that launches you into that glory. There is an exact method. There is an exact investment. There is an exact thing that you can do, that you're supposed to do, that's going to put you there. So I know we maybe at different times ask God and all of that, but at this point, we want to thank God for it. We want to thank God for it. We want to say, thank you, Father, for handing me the strategy for my success this year. Thank you, Father, for handing me the strategy for my breakthrough this year. Because many of us have to have that kind of breakout year like Jacob had. That's, I'm telling you, before the, the word of the Lord crystallized into the word glory, that's what I just heard. It was going to be a breakout season. I don't know how many people it's going to be for. I simply just speak it the way that the Lord puts it in my heart. But for many people, it's going to be, oh, thank you, Father. And I feel the anointing present, even as I'm touching on this topic, for many of us, it's going to be a breakout year. And you'll remember this word when that begins to happen in your life. I don't know in what area, like in what form, what field you're, oh, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Listen, God is set to move many of us into this space this year. It will be a breakout year for many of us. I feel the anointing so strongly, even as I'm speaking this right now. So we are going to thank God because there is a strategy God has that will break you. Let me tell you, you've labored in, in obscurity for a while. You've labored in like, I don't know, it's just ambiguous. You're not sure. It's just, let's, let's give this a shot. No, there's something God will put in your hand. There's something God will put in your mouth. There's something God will put in your dreams. There's something God will put in your visions this year. You will step out. You will do it. It will seem stupid, maybe, but it will produce your breakout. 
just like Jacob broke out of what uh, Laban had been planting and planning and just plotting against him, that is exactly how you're going to break out of the metrics you've been in. Without this, you will continue in that, that cycle. You are breaking out this year. So let's open our mouth and thank God for breaking us out this year and also for giving us the strategy, the secret, the formula that is going to bring that about. Let's just open our mouth and pray us. Zikro bate malivaris. We am bele soto menda ya katolia. Zekam bi iba tuna valis kabari a mende ya katolia. Nekem bregere boska mamra. Bene mendis kalidi ya koma leke As we took this last prayer, the Spirit of God put an impression upon my heart of David, of David, how he had been laboring in that backside and was practically forgotten. They literally actually forgotten. It's not like it was practically like they forgot him. They asked for all the songs to be brought out and then he was left out. And I don't know who it is on the call today, but you will have a David kind of story. You will have a David kind of story where you are sent for to be brought out of where you've been trapped. This year, you will give that testimony that it happened for you just the same way it happened for David. That even though the situation didn't seem like it would favor you, even though it didn't seem that in quotes is your type they were looking for, that person who, 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 who needs to call you out will call you out in this year. You will be sent for, you will be called out. It will be as though they have your name on that thing. So when they say, bring all the possible people who could be used for this thing or who could be uh, you know, put in this place or brought in this, uh, into this level, they're not thinking about you. That's the truth. Because that's what happened with David. But I'm telling you that I don't know who it is, but I saw it, I heard it very clear. Somebody will have a David experience this year where they ask for you by name. How they know your name, I don't know. 
but they will ask for you by name. And that is how you would be broken out of the backside. That's how you'll be broken out of the backside. It's almost as though everyone else was lined up. And it's almost as though you were so small that you couldn't be seen. But I'm telling you that this year, this year, you will be sent for by name. No matter what it is that was standing in front of you as a blocker, no matter what it is that seemed to have been fencing you out of where it was happening, you will be sent for and you will have a David story this year. You will be broken out of that backside and you will be set in your rightful place in the name of Jesus. As I close, I want to leave this word of the Lord with you. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 8, it says here, it says, then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Then shall thy light yeah. break forth as the morning and thine health shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy real reward. This is the Lord to all of us on this. This is the word of the Lord to all of us on the altar today. As we have thanked God for everything concerning what he's doing for us this year, this is our story, that our light will indeed break forth according to the word of the Lord. So shall your light break forth. Listen, I'm telling you this because this is what I know that God is looking to do with us this year, okay? Many of us will experience a breakout year. This is the year that your light will break out. So continue to give God thanks, even as we continue with the rest of the 21 days. And even in your faith time, thank God for it. You're not begging for it. It's already established. You're simply giving thanks for it. So God bless us all. And I'm going to hand over to Gamala to close us out. Thank you, Amy. Powerful word. Um, guys, I need you to appropriate those words. Um, Many of us don't know how these things function in the prophetic. When a prophet releases a word, you want to receive it so that that word can become flesh in your life. Um, thank you for that powerful prophetic unction. Thank you for blessing us with that, with that um, word. And I hope that um, many of us will see the reality of those words in our lives in this year in the name of Jesus. A um, couple of announcements. Tomorrow is the 10 hour prayer marathon. Um, we'll be on the altar for uh, 10 hours, starting right around, uh, I believe it's 7 a.m. Nigerian time, um, 6, 6 a.m. Ghana, 8 a.m. Um, Southern Africa, um, 9 a.m. Eastern Africa. I want to challenge you to invite a friend for the family altar. Very important. If invite a friend for the family altar, and I promised someone that we will take a special prayer for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Trusting God. I'm going to ask Amy to find a way to squeeze that in. Those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. If you have someone like that. Speak. I, um, yeah, go you, ahead. You didn't even have to ask me to squeeze it in because I had already put it down because God had shown me some things that we have to pray about. We'll actually thank him for on the family altar tomorrow. So if you yeah. happen to fall into, you know, that category as well, you have, if you have friends, you know, like that or family members, let them come. Because before Damalai would mention it, it had, I had already penned it down because in the time of prayer, I heard that that's something we need to address in the uh, yeah. mount up for family altar prayers tomorrow. Yeah, when I led the prayers on Monday, I believe, I had led us in a prayer of repentance and I've received a few testimonies from that. People saying that it's true, their families worshipped these deities that gave babies in their villages, especially those in Edo State and some other parts of the country, Nigeria. You see, um, when those kind of things happen, it can cause serious delays in child childbirth. We have people that said six years looking for children, four years, that, um, that was what was missing in their life. They didn't know that they needed to do a prayer of repentance for that. So if we repented now, God is able to release and do what he wants to do. So I want to challenge you, invite someone for the family altar um, and let's make it a point of duty to always invite people for this family altar. A lot of issues and families that we get to see because we are ministers and leaders that we don't discuss openly. But I can tell you for a fact, there are a lot of issues. People are going through stuff and 
there is no hope. It so happens that when you go to regular church, they may not take a prayer like this, um, you know, for you, especially on a Sunday. And so God creates small ministries like this to do just that, to tackle the needs of his people. And this season of Thanksgiving is very, very important for us to be strategically placed to do what we need to do for the hand of God to move. It's an altar of Thanksgiving, an altar of Thanksgiving. Um, hopefully when we have the last day, we'll expand a lot more on that. But please, guys, make it a point of duty to be online on the family altar. Um, I want you to take the time of prayer that we normally have, because on Thursdays, which is our prayer marathon, we are not on the altar at 12 noon U.S. Eastern Standard. We're not on the altar at um, 6 p.m. Nigeria, 5 p.m. Ghana. We are done with the 10-hour marathon, so we don't have to come back to the altar. Use that slot, the family altar, for tomorrow's one-hour prayer. Come on the altar. And I want to ask, also ask the King Zaro ladies to use an hour for the family altar tomorrow, not 45 minutes. I, I believe God wants us to really bring about a thanksgiving on a few things that are key issues that destabilize families. Families are the, um, the, the foundation God set even before the church. That's the truth. So it's the family before the church. But well, people don't know that. And for that reason, a lot of things happen. I was having a chat with Amy the other day and we just said, my God, the devil takes too much in families, takes too much, too much, too much. And I'm seeing that one of the things that God wants us to do this year is, is, is to focus on the restoration of families, uh, restoration of families, restoration of fatherhood, restoration of motherhood, restoration of husbandhood, all kinds of dimensions in families. And so tomorrow's family altar will be the time we dedicate to the one hour prayers and that we do on a daily basis. Invite your spouse. If you come alone, uh, do something different. Invite your spouse. If he or she is in the office, send them the link. They can log in and just stay muted, but just be a part of it because the spirit of God will be present to touch and to move. And we want to make sure that as many people as possible can offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving on the altar to be able to um, uh, be touched by the hand of God. So thank you again, Amy. Um, we will see you guys on the altar tomorrow. Also, just keep in mind, we, have, we do have assigned prayer leaders for each segment of the altar. You can log in and stay for a minimum of 30 minutes or as long as three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, whatever makes sense for you. Um, just make sure you log into that altar tomorrow and um, we'll see you on the altar. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Have a nice day. Have a nice evening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Blessings. Thank you, Cho. Bye, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ma.